All right. If I say, what is your GC? Grand Company? Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much one of the three factions you choose at the start. The Serpernatter, Maelstrom, or... I don't remember the other one. There's the Twin Serpents, there's Maelstrom, and then there's the Immortal, Immortal Flames. Flames. Immortal Flames, yeah. yeah. Those, That's what I have. Those pretty much are something you can change at any time. Uh, they're going to be used for... Kind of used for PvP. Uh, but other than that, it's more like a lore thing other than, more than anything. You get like uh, armor set based on them and stuff like that. And like I said, it's something you can... Oh, and it dictates where you can buy an apartment as well. I'm pretty sure. I think you can get an apartment anywhere. I, I wish it was only in, like in your GC town. I think I know. Like you can get an apartment anywhere. Huh. It's been a long time since I had to buy an apartment, so... Yeah, apartment had not that bad to buy compared to a house. If you want to yeah, go... Yeah, I think apartments yeah. are expensive <laughs> look at houses. <laughs> if you're ready to spend 24 hours on trying to get a house... I... I don't, it took me, like, a year to get a house. <laughs> yeah, they really need to fix the housing system. <laughs> Uh, that's that's a whole other yeah, conversation that's a, too. Yeah, that's gonna be a whole other conversation for sure. All right, uh, let's say I uh, let's say I say okay, okay, I'm gonna have to art cast this resurrection. Uh, that means casting something that normally you'd want to uh, swift cast on. Yeah. So you're just like casting a spell normally rather than doing anything to speed up the process. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, it's going to be used a lot for healer. Uh, they're going to say, okay, I can raise, but I have to art cast because I don't have my swift cast. That's going to make it instant instead. So art cast pretty much casting it the normal way, I guess I could say. Uh, let's say I say, okay, we're going to do HOA. H O H today. I probably butchered it, but yeah. Heard of hearing? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? H O H. H O H. Oh, heaven on high. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Okay. <laughs> heaven on uh, I and the. Wait, why can't I not remember the other one? I have a blank. House of the Dead? Yeah. POTD. POTD, yeah. Uh, POTD, Palace of the Dead, HOH, Even on High. Those are two roguelike, I guess I could say, dungeon. Don't know if I can say roguelite. But they're, it's like roguelike adjacent. Yeah, it's like it's like a different system in the game. Uh where you go into a dungeon and you start at level one and palace of the dead and level sixty four even on I? Or is it 50? I think it's 61. 61? Okay. You start at like a different level. You level through the dungeon. Uh, and the other thing is you level your gear that way. And by that I mean all your gear doesn't matter. You can have a modifier to your armor and weapon. That's going to pretty much dictate your uh, weapon damage, skill damage, etc. And you get those higher by... you. Uh, uh, opening blue chest, which gonna increase everyone uh, like weapon level by one or armor level by one and stuff like that. And there's a, a lot of different mechanic in well as well. And that I don't want to get too much into that because that could be a, like a whole conversation as well. But it's yeah, pretty we much could spend like an hour or more talking about deep dungeon. Yeah, but yeah, deep dungeon is like another. Uh, system in the game which has their own reward and uh, pretty much their own leveling system as well inside. Uh, okay, let's go down. Okay, let's say I say H W. Evans Ward. H W. Uh, no, you already got it. H uh, W. Yeah, Evans Ward. I which... almost said homework. <laughs> you do <laughs> doing too much these days. <laughs> But yeah, HW Events Word, which is the first expansion of the game. Uh, if I say, okay, let's go in order then. 
if I say A R R. Around my blind. Yeah. Which <laughs> I don't know why I slurred over that. <laughs> <laughs> A R R is the base game, pretty much. Uh, S B. Uh, Stormblood. Uh, yeah, which is the third expansion, and. Uh, what's the abbreviation for SHB? Yeah, SHB, which is Shadowbringer. I look forward to the next uh, abbreviation being EW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what are you? I hope they do. I mean, we got so many weird abbreviations that I'm going to get into later on, like UWU. Final Fantasy oh, yeah. EW. Uh, okay, let's say I say, okay, you have to. Well, I guess it's going to be a given. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna still gonna sit, sit that way. Uh, you need to interrupt that ability. Uh, that means you need to use a skill that usually most most jobs have a skill that will either stun or silence something or interrupt. Okay, when do you know you can interrupt something? The when it bar is bar flashing. That was a kind of recent addition they put in, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. Used to have to guess. Used to now is, <laughs> yeah, it's like, can I interrupt this? Let's find out. Yeah, pretty much. If you see um, an ability that the bar, when the casting is blinking red, that means this is something you can interrupt. And a lot of time you're gonna have to, because it's either gonna be like too large to avoid, or it's gonna do like too much damage and stuff like that. So the time those you want to interrupt with. Anything that's gonna say, I think it's say interrupt, and uh, the game. I think yeah. like one of the skills is interject, right? Yeah, there's interject, uh, add grace, and I think there's another one. But I don't recall. Oh, uh, there's low blow, low blow stuns. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I mean, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, if I say, okay, healer, please assume not that. Uh. Asuna is a thing to remove debuffs. Uh, you'll know that it can be something can be uh, removed if it has a little white um, bar above the icon. Yeah, right under it. If there's a white bar, that means that is a debuff that you can remove from someone by do using Asuna or I don't play healer, so I don't know the, the other ability. It's only Asuna on the healers. It's always using okay, and yeah, Bart has an ability as well, but I don't recall the yeah. name. Yeah, Bart has its own that I don't know, but I know on the healers because Asuna is a roll action. It's always Asuna. Uh, the warden's hand uh, okay. removes a detrimental effect from self or target party member. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so that if you see something, in, if you see a debuff with a white bar under it, you can remove it with uh, those ability. Okay, if I say. Tank, please invol that. Uh, use the invulnerability uh, skill, which every tank has. Uh, Dark Knight has a very strange one called Living Dead. Uh, if you take fatal damage, you'll be revived instantly, and you are invincible until you are healed to full. But if you don't get healed to full within a certain time frame, you're just gonna die again. Yeah. Uh, Paladin has. Uh, I'll ground. What is Yes, Hall Ground. And Which is the one of the best one. I don't know if yeah. I said it's the best one, but it's one of the best one. And Warrior has Hunging. Yeah, which is so good because it's yeah, it's like it has a one minute sh cooldown, something like that. It's stupid. Yeah. And, and Dark Knight has drop below below one. weird one. Yeah, and Gunbreaker shoot themselves to make themselves oh, invincible. Okay. <laughs> Gunbreaker has Super Bullet. You know, I was trying to forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. You use the ability. It drops you to 1 HP, but then you're immune for a certain amount of time. And that thing, I don't know why <laughs> they decided to do that. Uh, you also have to be careful of those uh, server ticks that we mentioned prior, because it's very possible to Super Bullet because the Invuln kicks in after the HP drops, so you can get auto-attacked at just the right time and die. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like kind of weird. It. It's, it's kind of like how uh, in in real life, if someone throws a baseball at your chest and it hits you when your heart's beating at just the right interval, you just die instantly. 
That's a fear you now have because I shared that fact with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alternate net subject. Uh, if I say, okay, this box, uh, this, uh, watch out for the knockback. Uh, watch out for an ability that will push your character back a certain distance. Uh, DPS Often usually have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's usually an ability. I don't remember. I, was it sh was it sure cast for casters? Yeah, cast for sure cast. And then uh, arm's length for uh, arm's length. Yeah, pretty much for everyone else, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everyone Malay else. and tanks have arm's length, right? Yeah, pretty much. Those what those two ability do is they're gonna give you knockback immunity for most of the knockback. There's a couple that get through, but most of the time... Yeah, not everything can be, uh, in, like, prevented. Yeah. So if someone say, okay, please use knockback community, that mean arm length or short cast. To prevent, to, like, in your death mechanic, pretty much. Uh, okay, if I say landslide. Oh man, I uh, that gives me PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you use Blade Dragoon as well. <laughs> oh man, it's pretty much uh, it's only used in Titan, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty much an ability that's gonna push that's everyone too, up. That's too much as it is. <laughs> that's called. I forgot it was called that. Yeah. Uh, I remember back back when like uh, back when I started playing, I had a not so ideal uh, PC. So uh, if I had a landslide put on me, I didn't really actually see it until like a second too late. <laughs> so I just I kept running around. Like anytime I would do that fight, I was always running around just in case so I could already be moving out of the way. So you were praying that we. Be at the right spot. Yeah, pretty much. All right. If I say, uh, please use LB. Limit break. Limit break. <laughs> and who should use a, a LB? Uh, obviously DPS. not melee DPS. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you don't want us to do more DPS. <laughs> but yeah. Uh... I I just I just like taking. <laughs> I just like taking the LB3 from, from melee because there's, like, in most of my groups, especially alliance raids, there's always that one samurai that's, like, hovering over that button just waiting and waiting for their chance to LB3. <laughs> I just rip it away with my dancer LB3. At least the LB on dancer look really nice. Uh. It is so pretty. That's also why I like to use it. <laughs> also, uh, LB is divided and three ability I guess I could say LB1, LB2, LB3 uh, which is like a bar on your screen the more you fill up the more damage you're gonna do you can only use LB3 if you're in a full party which means eight, eight people we yeah, unless you're unless you're freaking uh, actual warrior blade and you get four of them yeah that's... <laughs> <laughs> and also in terms of who should use the, the LB usually it's DPS going to use it most of the time to like yeah healers when everyone else is dead <laughs> yeah like in terms of priorities DPS going to use it to like close a fight or to like skip a phase or stuff like that healer is going to use it if a lot of people are dead because what the healer LB does is it bring everyone to fall pretty much raise everyone and heal and them revives them yeah tank LB is going to be used for certain mechanic only because a lot of time it's going to either make everyone invincible like for life. Like A12S. That was the thing. Yeah, A12S. Um, uh, SOS, like uh, Seed of Light. Oh yeah, Seed of Sacrifice needed it. Um, Omega uh, O11S. You have to use it for Omega. And even the, the bots say, Oh, you should use a limit break to survive this attack. So even the game tell you. Usually, if the game wants you to use a tank LB, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you, like, oh, please. Uh, like, like in SOS, they say, transcend your limit to survive this attack, something like that. To weather the storm or something along this. Uh, Alexander's like, divine judgment in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. 
And yeah, like tank tank LB are also used in a couple of fights if you fail a mechanic to like make sure you don't wipe, pretty much. Like in E9S, if you fail one of the tower, you I guess I'm gonna talk about tower after. Uh, you can use the LB for that to like mitigate a little bit. All right, if I say everyone get you to your tower. It's a, it's a mark on the ground with a little circle and usually something falling down onto it that if enough people don't stand in it, um, usually it's one or two, uh, everybody gets hurt. Yeah, and sometimes everyone dies. Uh, a lot of time on the tower, which can be a circle most of the time, there's going to be like, um, I guess I could say a bead or like another like circle that rotate around. That usually means the number of people that need to be in that circle to properly soak the mechanic. So it's it's from one to four, because uh, Shiva has a tower of four. So usually it's one to four people need to be in that spot to soak that mechanic correctly. I guess I could say. My favorite are the mechanics where there's, there's like two split stack markers and like watching people scramble around <laughs> trying to figure out which side to go to. <laughs> yeah. Or people that, that feel frisky, they oh, I'm going to take this one. Then I'm going to take this one. Then I'm going to die. That's pretty much what happened. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, people, it can, tower can also be mean, uh, can also mean meteors, like both term can be used. But the, the people use tower because usually that was the mechanic from Bahamut, where that originated from. So people use that for use that from there. Alright. If I say I am gonna waste my time getting so many MGP today. Oh man. It's, it's Manderville something point. Yeah, I just gold know. saucer point. <laughs> it's the currency used to play all the games in the gold saucer, and you can also turn them in for items like uh, mounts, uh, hairstyles, some glamour. Yeah, this... uh, triple triad cards, which I don't want to talk about because I do not want uh, to talk about triple triad. <laughs> We're going to talk about that another day. <laughs> or Lord of Verminion. Especially not Lord of Verminion. <laughs> God, I still don't do those things. I, gotta get I did the tutorial once and that was way too much. <laughs> I gotta get that stupid penguin so then I can never think about Lord of Verminion ever again. Lord of Verminion, by the way, is a mini game which is and the Gold Saucer, which is kind of like the casino, I guess I could say. Uh, where there's... Uh, the Ghost Saucer is the place where you, there's going to be a lot of activity for everyone to enjoy casually. There's going to be like... And it's a good place to learn mechanic as well. Because there's a couple of plays that going to have like mechanic you have to dodge and stuff like that. And you get a reward for that. And it's non lethal so you cannot die doing those. Uh, there's also a lot of things like the triple, triple Triad which is the card game from FF8. Uh, Lord of Vimeon, which is kind... It's... Uh, FF... 11 on the DS game. FF12. FF12, yeah. yeah. I still have that game somewhere, so I knew what that was. But it's pretty much that game put into a mini game where you use your minion to beat boss or the player, pretty much. It's almost like a strategy, a strategy game, so... I've heard people compare it to StarCraft. I've never played StarCraft, but like, I, you know, if, if that's mm, a point of reference. <laughs> mm, yeah, I guess, because you control like more than one unit. It's more like kind of an RTS game, but not really. So. Yeah, but, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Yeah. All right. If I say I spent two hours in this stupid MSQ. Are oh, you talking about the main scenario or... Yeah, main scenario roulette. <laughs> Both can work here. Yeah. yeah, main scenario that, quest. There's main scenario quest and then there's the MSQ roulette. Yeah. Where you're pretty much in there for two hours. <laughs> the MSQ, like, it's a main scenario quest, which is what, uh, it's the uh, special, like, quest symbol people has over the head. 
It's like an exclamation point with a spiky circle around it. It's like a meteor. It's a meteor. Yeah, I guess that would be the best way to say it. But yeah, those are like the main center quests, which you need to progress to go to the death expansion and stuff like that. And those are usually the one that give the most experience point as well, if you're going to think. You need uh, the MSU to unlock pretty much everything else. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> if I said I spent way too much money on the Mog Station. Ah, uh, yes, the... the uh, essentially, the cash shop, the cash shop <laughs> of 14. <laughs> But it's not it's not as bad as uh, other cash shops because there's no advantages aside from maybe like boosting uh, levels or skipping jobs, which I don't recommend doing for yeah. your first for your first uh, class. <laughs> if it's your first time playing, I will definitely not recommend doing a. a like story I've, quest. I've boosted. I've boosted like classes I've already played before on like alts and stuff, but I would never really do that like starting out on a game. Uh, okay, I guess. Yeah, it's it's pretty much like a box station, it's pretty much like where you buy mount, you buy costume. Glam. Yeah, glam. You buy like seasonal stuff and stuff and other stuff like that. That's where you buy die. Them. Also mm -hmm. where you manage your sub. Mm -hmm. Uh that would be the lodestone. Those are two kind of... Well, no, it's still a mod, mod station. Well, technically, Mog Station is where you manage that. They kind of renamed the the, the actual Mog Station to the, the Final Fantasy XIV online store. Yeah. <laughs> and now when, you, right now when you go to manage your sub, that area is called Mog Station. Yeah, they changed it. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so this... I. But they're uh, like they're still linked to each other. The the mod yeah. station has the optional opposite items button, which just takes you to the store. So like, they're still kind of the same thing. Yeah, like it's pretty, it's related pretty much. So okay, if I say you're gonna be empty and I'm gonna be OT. Oh, main tank, off tank. I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Main tank, off tank. Main tank is the one that's gonna take most of the attack. Off tank is gonna be the one there where they're gonna tank swap, which means they're gonna like, let's say there's a tank buster. I guess I could say tank buster, uh, it's a tank buster as well. Tank buster is the ability that pretty much anyone other than a tank is gonna die if they take it. And yeah. tanks still need to mitigate the damage with an ability, so to. I just use Black as Night and I'm good to go. <laughs> and yeah, the reason a lot of players gonna have a. Uh, a main tank and enough tank is there's gonna be oh i guess i that segue me to the other thing what's it say okay please take this ability from me i got a vault stack yeah or like if there's a mechanic where like there's a tank buster that puts a debuff on the tank that it hits to where they need to pass the boss to the other tank until it wears off, and then when they and then they'll get the debuff, and then you gotta switch again, and it'll just go back and forth. There's some mechanics like that. Cheap but, extreme. Yeah, a lot of that, a lot of it is stream and, and savage. But what is a bone stack? Uh, you take more damage for each stack you have. Uh, Vulnerability. For most cases, the maximum amount of loan stacks you can have is 16. <laughs> and I... I... <laughs> Please but... don't get 16 loan stacks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, loan stack is something like most of the ability. If you fail the mechanic, it's a cone of shame on the DPS. Pretty much. Because that means you take more damage, and that's why a lot of time people are gonna need like to tank swap an ability, which is gonna be used by shirking the boss, which is one of the tank ability which transfer uh, aggro, I guess, to the, the other person. So if not, if they don't do that, a lot of time the main tank's gonna die to one ability. So they tank swap until the ball stack is down, then they re swap. It's a lot of back and forth for that. Uh, I, I guess I could talk about this one, which is not really a, a great one, but uh, if I say, hey, I did a great parse on this. Uh, 
that means that you did good damage. Yeah, parse pretty much is damage calculated through ACT, the Advanced Combat tra uh, Tracker. The parts of fight is going to be like the overall damage everyone did, I guess, or like individual damage of everyone did. Like, parts is pretty much your DPS amount, I guess I could say, at the end of the fight. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay, if I say uh, he's going to do a point blank. when they attack the area right in front of them, right? Yes and no. It's usually it's going to be... Uh, point blank is going to be like... It's going to be a, an attack really close from the boss. That you need to move up right from the, from the boss. So... I don't know if I explain it. Like, if I go through the official thing, it's say... Uh, in AoE that hit anyone within a certain radius of the enemy casting it. So, it can also be uh, referred as a cleave sometime. That a lot of time, uh, things gonna get hit by cleave. And if you stand too close to the tank, you're gonna take damage from that cleave or, or from that point blank as well. Alright, if I say, man, I cannot wait to, to miss all those positional now. Oh, positionals. The ability uh, tells you you gotta punch them in the booty or punch them in the hip, basically. Yeah. Pretty much there's two types of positional, back and flank. Either you need to be on the side of the bus or behind the bus for that ability to either do something extra, or but most of the time it's gonna be more damage it's gonna do. So Yeah. And if you're a monk, you get guaranteed crits as part of your rotation. Yeah, and I'm happy Ninja doesn't need to be in the back to do trick and attack anymore. Because <laughs> that used to be a thing. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> uh... Didn't Ninja used to have to do sneak attack from the front or something like that? Or am I remembering wrong? Uh, yeah, before they took a lot of things out and make it so much easier. <laughs> uh... Alright, let's go for this one. What if I say... Oh, you're a res mage. Red mage. Because <laughs> <laughs> red mages have uh, a race. <laughs> yeah, and they they're... were very, they were very, very popular in Eureka because of that. <laughs> and they were very popular. We're opening a, a position for a third me member for a light party now. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Red Mage is a slang for Red Mage. Reason for that is Red Mage is the best class to best DPS class to raise, I guess I could say. Cause yeah, because they, they get free swift cast with the uh, dual casting. Yeah, exactly. So it's super easy for them. And I don't even have dual cast on my Red Mage hotbar. <laughs> Well, it's not, or, it's not swift, like or an not ability. Swift cast, I mean. I don't even have swift cast on my hotbar. I'm sorry. I, I, I <laughs> reversed it. Uh, Because, yeah, you get swift cast for free with dual cast. So there's, like, not even a reason to have it. Uh, let's... Uh, and res, by the way, is revive, which is, like, combat res and WoW, pretty much. It's, you, it's the ability that revive player through the fight. Yeah, I think on, um, what is it? It's called different things on each healer, though, right? Like, each one has a different name. Yeah, it's Burray's Resurrection, Ascend. Ascend. Uh, what is the Summoner one already? I think the Summoner one is also Resurrection. Could be, yeah. Uh... And I'm missing I one, I think. Like, a Summoner and Scholar, I think, share their rays. Yeah. Um, Am I missing one? And also, if you are resing most of the time, you can have a macro that's a stupid thing while doing it. I have a sweet Yu-Gi-Oh one for astrology. <laughs> like, most of the time, people are gonna have something about that. And all my other ones, I just have it set to uh, 
it'll target the person and it'll use their name and be like so and so what do we say to the god of death not today oh yeah the one i'm missing is Ray's, which is the white white mage one. Oh yeah how could we forget white mage <laughs> uh okay if i say please don't do anything during your res immunity oh yes 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 pretty much once you get raised during a fight, you, if you do not do anything other than moving, which means no auto attack, no skill or anything, you are invincible for about five seconds for most of the thing. Yeah. It's, it's your healer it is... time to heal you up. Yeah. yeah. So if you know like there's a, like a AOE attack coming, don't do anything. Wait until you're, you're back up. And because if not, you're just going to die in there. Healer is gonna hate you. <laughs> you can also you can also just wait to accept the raise until after the AOE goes off because there are some attacks that go through the invulnerability. Yeah, there is some. Oh, and they can also still give you vuln stacks even though you're, you're immune to damage. Okay, let's say I okay if I say I need to practice my black mage slide casting. Ooh, I know this one because I do that a lot as healer. Uh, slide casting is timing your spell, uh, spell cast to where you can move at the same time the cast is finishing. Uh, one way to learn when you can is by putting, just putting a random emote on your bar. Uh, when you're able to move while you're casting, the emote will, uh, light up like normally. So you'll be able to see like, okay, I can move at this point and then you can practice that. And kind of get so a feel smart. for it. Yeah. I guess we're it's so smart. Yeah. It's like a good way to learn. As, especially like I'd say for Black Mage. Because usually they're so immobile. But you can like get away from doing mechanic that way. By doing slack casting a lot. Yeah. Sometimes though it's better to just stop casting the move. If you're in a position where slide casting isn't enough. Yeah. Like. You, you learn how to, how to do it and when to do it and when not to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's say, okay, this piece of gear has SKS on it. I don't want it. Skill speed. Yeah. Me, me with dancer gear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want skill speed on my dancer. <laughs> yeah, skill speed, which is a nebula, uh, one of the stats that reduce the GCD of your abilities in general. Yeah. I got it, plenty it on does my it if you're not a caster, basically. Yeah, because uh, caster is spell speed, pretty much. It's pretty much the same, but it's SPS, spell speed, instead. Yes. Uh, okay, let's say I say, look at, the, at this cute sprout. A uh, new player, they usually, new players will have a little sprout icon next to their name to show that they're a new player. Yeah. And or possibly an alt. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. If you see a sprout that do more than DPS than you in a fight, most of the time it's an alt. <laughs> but yeah, sprout is the way that the game tell that that player is new. So please be nice to them. And most of the time, people are nice to sprout. Like I'm always nice to sprout. I love I love helping sprout. Yeah, and there is different kind of icon for that. There is the sprout. There's the Sprout with the crown, which is returning player. Yeah. Uh, and there's the Burger King crown, which is the crown, which is a mentor. A mentor. And then there's a there's a Burger King crown that has like little tools to show that they're a crafting and gathering mentor. And there is the one with the sword, which is combat mentor. Yeah. And just a crown is both mentor at the same time, I think. It's... Yep. Don't recall the exact term, but it's like mentor. Uh... I guess I already explained stack. Okay, let's say I say... Okay, I'm going to go into this group uh, with my static today. Static is a set a uh, group of people who do reading content and other stuff. It's static because it's always there. Uh, and it's like pretty much just a set group of players who do content every week. Yeah, pretty much. It's like a, it's a raid group pretty much most of the time. And they do fight together and they either fight or a lot of content together at a static, well, 
not static moment, but like a specific moment of the week and stuff like that. It's pretty much an organized group. I guess that's the way I could say it. Yeah, it can really help with learning mechanics since y'all are all together consistently. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say I'm gonna go do tea today. Yep, yep Alexander. Alexander. Which is one of the ultimate fight. Perfect legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what about you, Cub? Upper coil or ultimate uh, an coil, coil so... up on it. Is it ultimate or, no? or on ending? I thought it was uh, ultimate coils of Bahamut. Uh, it's on ending. Because it's, it's oh, on yeah, ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ending call of Bahamut ultimate. Oh, yeah. So that's why. And, and then there's Uwu. -woo. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimates are permanent content, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uwu or Ultima Weapon Ultimate. <laughs> yeah. Or the Weapon Refrain. Uh... <laughs> Those are the three ultimate, which are series of challenge, I guess I could say. Uh, there are a bunch of fights that are re-imagined, and there cannot be on sync. I guess I'm going to explain on sync. Uh, and pretty much, they give you the legend title, ultimate legend, and perfect legend titles, which mean people complete those, and they're are regarded as the artist content in the game, pretty much. Yeah, there's some very cool weapon glamours, too. Mm -hmm. And now that I, I guess I could say, okay, we're going to do this unsynced. Uh, doing it at max level and setting it. There's a setting in the uh, duty finder where you can make it to where you go into like dungeons or raids or whatever at your current level and item level and uh, you can do the lower level stuff easier, I guess. Yeah, and, but you uh, sometimes you don't get all the reward. Yeah, there's like you like you can't like take someone in there who's lower level and uh, take them through there to get XP. Um, yeah. And a lot of time, like, events going to require you to be sync, which means to do it yep. at the normal level of the place, I guess I could say. That you should be doing that. And normal item level as well for that. Uh, let's say... Okay. I guess there's two ways for that. I'm uh, going to go start with this one. Okay. Uh, partner, you're going to get Tether. Please move away. Uh, usually, sometimes there's mechanics where a boss will tether themselves to somebody. Uh, usually, to uh, it's usually at the start of like big attack or anything like that. Uh, usually, you want to take that away from where everyone else is. A uh, prime example of that is Titania. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of times, it's gonna be tethered to the boss or tethered to another player. <laughs> Uh, depending on the mechanic, either you want to break the tether by moving away, or you don't want to break the tether, that means you cannot move away from your partner. And Titania is another example of that too, because there's like, there's tethers from the boss and tethers to each other in that fight. <laughs> yeah, Titania is a great fight to, to learn mechanic for sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, this already said... You have already said, on think already did. Okay. Uh... Alright, I need to work on my uptime on this fight. Uh, damage uptime, like how often you're using your skills, how often you're casting things, how often you're using your cooldowns, it's all uptime. Yeah, exactly. So pretty much, always be casting something. Yes. <laughs> A, B, C. Yeah. <laughs> you always want to be doing something during a fight. Don't sit on your top and don't do anything. Unless you really want to learn the fight, in that case that's fine. And you're getting more and more comfortable. That's fine. You can lose your uptime, but uptime mean you need to be um, always like try to always do something in the fight. Always use the, yeah. always do damage. Always put in a buff and stuff like that. Like be active in a fight. Uh, Even an unoptimized rotation is better than nothing. Yeah, because you're still doing damage. So, unless you're doing an anatomized rotation on purpose, but in that case, please don't do that. Uh, okay, let's say, Tank, please vote this. Oh, provoke! 
Yeah. Uh, it's a taunt ability. Uh, tanks use that to move aggro to themselves. Uh, it used to actually be kind of a struggle to maintain aggro, so... Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's mean using yeah. your provoke ability to either ta uh, tank swap an ability or to, let's say, uh, the main tank die. One of the DPS has aggro, the off tank's gonna provoke the boss so the DPS doesn't die. Or you're in a dungeon, you get a very eager DPS or healer that wants to charge off ahead and pull everything for you. <laughs> yeah, which I guess can bring me to the other term. Okay, thank you can do wall to wall here. You can pull everything until you can't anymore. Exactly. I've been, I've been, I've been learning to do that recently. It's been fun. A little scary, but fun. Yeah, a lot of times that's going to be used for once you really over level a place and the tank and yeah, healer. Yeah, and you're very comfortable with the healer and yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you pretty much me pull everything until the boss. That's pretty much it. And at the boss, you stop, kill everything, then you move to the boss. And then you do another one. Uh, okay, I guess I, that's more like a RP term, but I'm still going to talk about it. If you see in someone borrow that is written W W E slash T. What do that mean? That's a bit that's more RP. Fuck up slash tell. Yeah, exactly. That's the way people want to RP if you are into that. Uh, walk up means you can walk up to that person and say hi. Tell me they're okay if you uh, whisper them pretty much. So some people are going to say walk up only because most of the time that means they are trial people so they cannot use stealths. So that's how they, they're going to say it. Um, is there any term I miss? I think I pretty much got... Oh, I guess... I guess it's not really a big term, but... Well, it's, it is and not is... Please... Um, can you please work on your rotation? What would rotation mean here? That is the order in which you use your skills. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much your... What you what are you gonna do like and which order you should use your abilities? So yeah. so that is your rotation. Um Okay. I guess it's one here. Uh let's say Oh, I wasn't a bad pug today. A uh, pug, pickup group. Yeah. Uh it's usually a group of uh people who join the it's it's uh when you join a group kind of like not pre-made it's just rounding up a bunch of um where you pick up people <laughs> yeah pretty much to do content on a whim and it's not like predetermined there's no like planned uh group setting it's just whoever wants to go go yeah it's pretty much right up as a man of player i guess i could say that they know each other before they're just like doing content with random people. Uh, let's say I say we're gonna be progging this tonight. Prog meaning uh, progression, meaning uh, when you're doing content with your group uh, for the first time and you're learning mechanics and you're getting everything down and you're learning the fight as a whole, that is progression. Yeah, exactly. Because you you do it you do it sometimes it most of the time it does involve uh beating yourselves against a wall until something works. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time is that. Remember that from my wow days. <laughs> I remember the, that. The mythic raids. I remember that we're progging these days we're progging uh, EATS for like four days now and we're getting there so. Stupid light rampant. Uh, let's see. That's not really used. Well, okay, yeah, it's kind of used. It's uh, please line of sight. Uh, please LOS that ability. <laughs> oh, uh, line of sighting means when you go uh, out of uh, range of uh, an ability. 
that could be either uh, good or bad. Like if you're having to, for bosses, there there will usually be a mechanic. Um, if there's like a mechanic where you need to get behind something, like in Crystal Tower, the behemoth boss, when you have to get behind the meteors, uh, when he's casting his zone so you don't get hit by it, or uh, in dungeons, <laughs> I actually just experienced this the other day, uh, when, uh, you know, someone, your tank is uh, pulling stuff, and uh, they keep running forward, and they go around a corner where you can't cast your healing spell on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you die, and then it's the healer's fault. <laughs> Very specific scenario, but that literally just happened to me the other day. But yeah, line of sight, it's usually like get behind something if you need to. If not, uh, yeah, it's get behind, uh, behind something so that you will not die from that most of the time. Usually that means if. You don't line of sight that, that means you just die. That's pretty much what. Um, that's pretty much. Is there any term I missed?